And just last week, President Trump declaring meat processing plants as critical infrastructure issued an order for these plants to remain open. More on this topic and other issues we continue to deal with in the time of COVID-19. We turn to NCBA CEO Colin Woodall, who joins us from Denver. Colin, how are you doing today? Doing well, Lane. It's another day in COVID land, but we're still trying to move forward and making sure we're doing everything we can to protect our members. Again, very tough time across the countryside and the entire nation and the world. Colin, could you tell us more about the president's executive order that I just mentioned and what that means for all aspects of the supply chain? You know, Lane, from the beginning of this pandemic, NCBA has been focused on ensuring that the supply of cattle and the supply of beef both continued throughout the chain. And as we have seen these plants either go offline or reduce in their speeds, it has caused a significant backlog in cattle. And one of the things that we saw is that the state and local governments were a big factor in determining whether or not these plants either stayed open or went dark. And we needed to have a national approach to ensure that each plant was being treated the same. And that's why we went to President Trump and asked him for this executive order. So as a result of this executive order, the Defense Production Act has been invoked on the packing plants. And now we don't have to worry about the whims of local government anymore. Well, Colin, as you know, there's a lot of talk at kitchen tables, at the stockyards, local cafes, and really especially on social media about what needs to be done to fix things from uh, the markets to packer control topics of conversation. A lot of solutions are being tossed about, but what is NCBA uh, doing not only uh, before this crisis began, but now and, and looking ahead? Uh, wh what's your message to these folks uh, that are wondering what can be done and what can we do together? Well, we have to get through this crisis first, and that is our priority right now, making sure that we can keep cattle moving through the system, because if we can't do that, that it doesn't even matter what these other decisions really end up being. We have got to keep harvesting cattle. But at the same time, our cattle marketing working group is meeting. They've had multiple phone calls throughout this pandemic. Uh, they started their work long before COVID-19 showed its head here in uh, the United States, and they will continue their work as we take all the lessons we have learned from COVID-19 to determine the next steps. Uh, there's a lot of things that we're looking at. Probably the biggest thing is the issue of price discovery. How do we truly find out what the value of that animal is worth? And we are looking at cash trade as a component of that. So our group is, is uh, looking at all the factors that play into that, knowing that a one-size-fits-all approach in this country and for this industry is not going to work. We need to look at the regional variances that we have and differences. And so that's what we're trying to formulate. The last thing that we want is to go to Congress and ask Congress to come up with a solution for us because I guarantee you that's not gonna be one we're gonna like. Colin, bringing up Congress, the CARES Act provided a funding for the agriculture sector, $19 billion in total, 16 for the production agriculture sector, and, and then it's broken down to the different uh, sectors itself. Uh, can you give us an update on how that CARES Act funding is looking? A lot of producers are wondering when they need to be contacting the USDA service centers to see if they can apply for some of the livestock assistance that's a part of that relief bill. So unfortunately, this program has taken way too long to implement but that is what you typically get with a government program. We continue to stay on USDA to try to understand what those requirements and parameters are gonna be because we don't know right now. In CBA, we went out, we got the funding for this, we pushed USDA to develop this program, and uh, we are now waiting for what those uh, parameters are going to be. I think the biggest piece of advice that I can give all of our viewers right now is make sure that you have records of what's going on in your operation. Make sure you have records going back to early March when this thing started, because when you have to go to the Farm Service Agency, which is where we expect you will have to apply, you're gonna need a lot of documentation. And just as soon as we have those details, NCBA will be coming out through uh, venues just like Cattlemen to Cattlemen here, and also through our newspaper and website to ensure that everybody knows what's gonna be required of them. Colin, any other words that you would like to share with the nation's cattlemen and women today? Uh, the bottom line is that we're working every day to make sure that we are protecting cattle producers. And the best way that we can do that right now is to keep the flow of cattle moving and the flow of beef moving. We're also doing everything we can to reassure the consumer that there is not a nationwide beef shortage out there. That they can have hamburger and steak tonight and they can have hamburger and steak tomorrow night. 
and with the invoking of the Defense Production Act on the packing supply, the packing capacity here in the United States, that's going to help with that. And also, it's really important to remind everybody, producers and consumers alike, that we are not euthanizing cattle. We are taking care of our cattle, and we will get them into the supply chain just as quickly as we can. Colin Woodall, thank you so much for joining us here today. Thank you, Lane.